Welcome to the WBNL Podcast, your online source for finding balance, where you can align, connect, and prosper. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the WBNL Coaching Podcast, Wandering But Not Lost Podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 176. Did I say that right? Did I say it was 176? Yes, I think it was 176. Um, they uh, Today, uh, Matt is actually not with us today, and I'm live in Las Vegas as we record this. So, so we've got a great guest today. This is a, a, a friend and a broker that I have known for, oh, we'll just say 20 plus years. And I don't think she's been on our podcast before, but Catherine Bavard is a longtime broker and experienced broker with a lot of different uh, experience here in Vegas and has done everything from real estate sales to brokers. I'm going to get her to tell a little bit more about herself and what she's currently doing. But Catherine and I have been brokers together in two large companies here. Uh, I'm actually, she's actually back being my broker again. Now that is pretty cool. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've, you've been my broker before, Catherine. Is that true? I think we've been brokers together, but I've never been your uh, agent. Um, I think the, at, at another company that you uh, hung your license with, you were under my brokerage as well, because you were off to do bigger and better things on oh, a national scale. Right. Okay. Well, there we go. But it's all good. We've, uh, we've, kind of gone down this path of real estate and I asked Catherine to come on today to give perspective in Mm -hmm. Las Vegas and particularly Las Vegas because on the podcast I've talked a little bit about we're going to discuss this eviction moratorium for tenants and what this means and kind of the pushback that's happening Uh, and we'll go through a little of the details but what the opportunities are for real estate agents because I really do think that Vegas in particular, because of how it was hurt with the with the pandemic, Catherine, um, you know, we really want to dig in because I think this is one of those places in the country that could have some impact with uh, folks that really are hurting, not only for the moratorium for eviction, but for we could maybe get into talking a little bit about mortgage uh, forbearance as well. So let me introduce Catherine Bovard. Uh, Catherine, you're currently the broker at Fidacity Realty, which is a new company and a new kind of business model, but why don't you take a few minutes and fill in the rest of the details and maybe even talk a little bit about what is this new company that you're with uh, and what the opportunities are there. And then we'll, we'll get into the eviction stuff. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Jen, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this podcast and that you, that you asked me. It's a, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, as you said, I'll, I'll give you a quick thumbnail sketch. 30 seconds or less. I've been in real estate for um, almost 30 years now, and uh, I've been a, a broker owner. Uh, uh, I've managed one of the top producing uh, companies uh, offices in the United States with over 450 agents. And I uh, was appointed to the Nevada Real Estate Division Advisory Council five years ago. I've been a certified mediator for the association. I serve as an expert witness in real estate. I am a senior faculty instructor for our association. Uh, Let me see. There's probably a few. Oh, I serve on professional standards. Um, And I run an office uh, with uh, Fidacity, which I'm really truly excited about because I think finally we have a business model that for agents um, that helps them build and and create a future business asset of wealth. So, you know, it's, it's just not most companies nowadays, as you know, is, is strictly a transaction based company, right? The agent is only has as much money as his last transaction closed. Um, with Fidacity, there's several different revenue streams. I, you know, Sir Richard Branson, to use a quote, says the only way to become wealthy is to have multiple income streams. So Fidacity offers that with stock options, revenue share, um, and, and your commission. So it's really, really a great opportunity that I'm excited about because my agents uh, in my office have this ability to create wealth. So that's kind of it in a quick short thumbnail. Yes. And I believe, and I, at this point in my career as well, have hung my license with you with Fidacity. We had the opportunity at WBNL Coaching to 
to contract with Fidacity to do a lot of the training that, that we have. So we're excited about that um, and bring that to expertise to it. But honestly, Catherine, it's this point about having the ability to the, I love the Richard Branson quote, and it is a point, right? And it's it's becoming a thing, a, a little bit of a trend. There's not a lot of companies that offer stock options, but agents are starting to wake up a little bit to, hey, if you can only make money via transactions, you know, maybe there's a better way. And, and that's what's not kind of exciting. And, and Fidacity has what, what additional interesting piece that they're adding to the mix. And it's an e-commerce marketplace to tie local businesses. So it's very cool. So I'm, I'm happy to be back with you as a, as an agent and, and hopefully continue to do what we're doing to build this and have, have actually have some residual income and create an exit strategy, even though I don't think we're ever really going to retire. What do you think? <laughs> do we yeah, really ever never. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't want to do a Fidacity commercial here, although I very easily could for the next hour talk about the training and support. But, you know, if any of your listeners are interested, um, I, I'm sure you can do like a little banner for a contact number uh, at the at the bottom and 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 we'll let them contact me. But I know that you, you know, uh, what they're here for is really to find out what the heck is sure. going on. Mm -hmm with this new CDC edict and how did that happen and what effect it's going to have on our, on our market. Oh, right. I mean, that's the real question. And to your point, everybody listening or on YouTube, just go to our show notes. Like you always do at WBNLpodcast.com this episode, and you can get Catherine's information. Even if you have some questions based on what we're talking about today, in regards to the business model, but also just if you want some insight about what's happening in Vegas and what we're doing. So let's talk about that. So we know the, we're going to talk first about the, the, the tenant eviction, uh, which had been extended and extended. And finally, July 31st, it did expire. Uh, however, it did get pushed up to the Supreme Court saying that there can't be any other extensions. However, the Biden administration, through using the federal agencies like HUD and VA and Fannie and Freddie, have extended it to October 3rd, right? But Catherine, I read a little bit more about this too. There is definitely pushback from NAR and so on, trying to battle it out in the courts a little bit to say, hey, you can't extend it anymore. But let's talk a little bit about what this means. Can we talk before we talk about agent opportunities? Let's talk about what is the main thing that's happening with this. It's it's about educating. So maybe the first thing we could discuss is there are opportunities if people are working with tenants, maybe that maybe want to down the road or maybe they know people that have tenants in there. This whole thing right now is about getting renter assistance to the tenant, right? Is that part, is that how you took it in reading the articles, Catherine? It's all about renter um, assistance, trying to get yeah, them to Yeah, ex exactly. Well, I and I think that one of the main issues that they use for this, Jan, and, and you're absolutely spot on that NAR has spearheaded uh, this, um, with a couple of states, I think Georgia is one of them, yes. uh, to to repeal um, the you know the uh, tenant uh, this whole eviction process. Um, they you know as we know NAR is very landlord uh, at pro you know and and so to help the landlords because here in Las Vegas we've got um, sixteen thousand landlords who've applied for assistance. Wow. Um, which means they haven't they haven't been getting they haven't been getting the rent. Now we know that there's I, I think nationwide about thirty four billion dollars in renters assistance, and so far maybe four of that has been used. Uh, you know, it changes daily, of course, but there's a tremendous majority of that money um, that's been allocated um, that just hasn't been used, and that's you know uh, because of the the process is so you know, red tape, convoluted, you know, tenants have to supply information that perhaps they don't even have anymore. Uh, mm. Landlords, uh, you know, so they're, they're hoping, I think part of this was so that uh, there can be a okay. ability for tenants and landlords to access some of that money. And that's why they did the extension. Um, so, you know, okay. we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. So again, and so that's like, hey, renters, if you can get through all the red tape and the convoluted process, now you can get the money. Landlords could be made whole. But let's let's so let's say that it takes you know a couple months for this to continue on. Let's turn now to what what's the opportunity for real estate agents 
with with a low inventory market and you know that is the issue right uh, you know aren't there don't you feel that there's specific opportunities that we could share with agents now about what can you do if you get up to speed with this and who should you target to see who might be ready to put their home on the market yeah exactly jan i mean we've kind of got a double whammy here because sellers are very reluctant right now to put their homes on the market because of covid and the variant and you know they don't want people coming through their house um, so I think that there's really an opportunity there for agents who can offer maybe a video tour only until they receive an offer so that they don't have multiple people coming through the house. I think that that would be a tremendous service that, that sellers would look into. So I think there's a great opportunity there for agents to, um, utilize kind of a different marketing approach. You know, you and I saw, uh, we were brokers during the Great Recession, during the foreclosure. And and I think just with like any industry, just we saw agents who excelled in that market um, and we saw agents who didn't. So uh, I would I would say to agents, you know, you you cannot rely on the same type of marketing and business model that you've done for your entire career. When the market changes, you must change your marketing. And you've got to look at what can you provide to the consumer that they need. So uh, that that would be one. I mean, I, I know that you had as well. I had agents who during the foreclosure, you know, changed their marketing, went to marketing to banks, got foreclosure uh, contracts and, you know, sold several hundred units a year, right? I mean, some 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 agents became very, very wealthy uh, in that three or four year period because they took advantage of what was going on in the market. And that and that's what I would say to agents right now. You know, don't try to force the market to conform to what you're doing, conform mm -hmm. to what the market's doing. So um, appealing to appealing to sellers and and another huge which I've been coaching my agents on, I think a tremendous opportunity is, so here in Vegas alone, if we have 16,000 landlords who are getting some kind of, uh, are looking for some kind of help, and those are the only the ones who've actually applied. There's definitely more, of course. Right? Yeah, there's, there's probably a lot more. What percentage of them are saying like, okay, I'm done. I'm out of the, you know, right. they're a small mom and pop investor. I'm out. The risk, you know, the liability is too much. Um, you know, I think that's a tremendous potential for listings is to access uh, those landlords and uh, and offer them, you know, a, a way out. They, you know, I, I will say you can sell a home, you can list and sell a home with tenants in it. You know, you have to, you know, uh, adhere to the uh, rental agreements. And certainly during this time, you couldn't evict them. But if we're looking at this going till October, you know, for a potential investor, that might be uh, that might be worthwhile. So let's assume that not everybody understands how they can go find where people who are the investors. What's your advice there? Like what, especially here in Vegas, but not remember, people listen to the podcast all over. So everything may not apply with title companies, but share your, what if I'm your, I'm on your company and I'm saying, hey, how do I find the, the investors that I can go prospect? Right. So um, I, I think you want to look at a couple of caveats and, and really I can, I can speak to our market here. Like you said, I, I know there are uh, states that don't use an escrow company, but I'm sure there are other services mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, that you can provide. But um, our title companies here in Nevada will provide agents. You can go to your title marketing rep and say, hey, I'd like a farm list. Right. So you kind of want to refine that farm list to, uh, of course, owners. Um, I think the easiest way to find out who's a who's a landlord um, and who would be the maybe the low hanging fruit, right, uh, uh, of landlords are those that are out of state. So, so I, yeah. So if you've got an out of state owner who owns property here in the state that you live in, um, they're even in less touch of yeah. how to, you know, what to do. So that would probably be my first uh refinement in my search is to look for out of state owners. Um, I probably want someone who's owned the home for um, at least three or four years. 
right? So they've got some equity in it yeah. um, that, you know, they can pay back their closing costs and, and they've done it for long enough that, uh, you know, they're, they're tired of it. Um, those, and, and then perhaps there would be a price range um, that you would want to stay within, you know, and whatever, whatever that determines, th those determinants are for you and would work best for you. But those are, those are probably the top three or four that I would suggest. So we're going to get mostly mailing addresses with that, unless you get one of those services like get ID data where you can pay to maybe find emails and all that. So let's talk a little bit about what you could do to send to those folks. You know, if you'd only have an email and wouldn't you just agree that it's just a letter or a market analysis or something saying, hey, have you considered selling your home, you know, in this uh, hot market, something to that effect? Is that the advice? You mean, you know? You're not going to have their email or their home. You're going to have their, their, phone, their mailing address. Right? You're going to have their mailing address. Right. Right. So um, I would suggest, Jan, just like you've always coached um, your your people, is that you have a business plan for your farm and you have it calendared. You know, we used to, we used to talk about um, 21 touches, 21 touches of pain, right? Where you, mm -hmm. you went through and you actually designed your system. And, and I'm going to say to agents out there, it's so critical that you have a system because I promise you what, one of the things that, that I learned from Jan is, is that, you know, systems are key. Every successful, and let's face it, as, as real estate agents, you're business owners. You know, it's just like you own a Starbucks. Starbucks doesn't one shot of marketing. You know, they've got a consistent marketing plan that they put together uh, that they do. And, and so, you know, depending on your budget, that's probably the first thing that I would look at. How much money do you have to spend? Right. And that's mm -hmm. going to determine how many touches that you can that you can do or how big the farm is. Maybe you only want to do 500 mail outs or maybe you only want to do 250. I mean, you're going to look at how much money you want to invest. And, and I would suggest that at least 90 days minimum. I mean, I, I would really highly recommend that you put together something for six months that you're, you're reaching out and touching these people and, getting them to respond back to you. Hey, you know, please uh, visit my website and sign up for my VIP newsletter that's gonna keep you on top of yeah. what's going on in the market in Las Vegas and what are prices doing and how are sales going so that you, they respond to you. I think that you have to offer value to uh, your clients before you can ask for anything. So yeah, of course you do an Im initial mail out. Um, you know, I'd recommend that you combine maybe, uh, you, cause you want them to start recognizing your branding, your name. Um, so that maybe the first time that they see it. And, and once again, you know, it's kind of a lot of information for 20 minutes, but you want consistency in your branding and marketing that you're going to be mailing to these people. So you've got the same colors, you've got the same font, you've got the same look. So if you send out a postcard uh, for mm -hmm. the first one that says, Hey, we're here to help, you know, landlords, um, then you send them perhaps a letter the second time, but it's got the same font, your same logo. Hopefully you have a logo yourself as well as the company. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, another great thing that you taught me, Jan, about, you know, branding. So you're going to have your company logo. You're going to have your, your logo on there as well. So success is 99% perception, right? Um, they're out of state that st establishing that bond of trust for you is even more important. And then that just leads to where we could kind of summarize this last piece, because that's great, great advice. It's about the systems which really speaks to there's so many agents who just never really have put together their seller system, you know, their whole marketing for a listing. And I think that's what maybe holds agents that are more buyers agents back. But let's face it, we're in a market where if you really want to list to last, I say that all the time. I know you probably do too. list to last in any market. But right now, if you can get the listings, you're golden. So because there's just no inventory, you're going to have to deal with, you know, multiple offers and a whole nother, thing for another podcast, you know, how to handle all that. But right now it's 
get comfortable with and learn what you need to do to stand yourself apart is what I would say on your marketing. So to your point, you made me think when you're saying you put a campaign together with these out-of-state land owners that own a home, but they don't live there. And you just don't do it one and done, right, Catherine? It's a system. You're going to farm. This is now your farm. You're, you're, you're maybe you're in, you like to work the Summerlin area of Vegas, for example, or whatever. And you're going to really consistently do that. You have to have a game plan, but you also have to show the seller why they should choose you. And that would be in those mailers and that stuff or driving people back to your website or examples of the things that you do for marketing. So let me ask you this final question on on what are you recommending to your agents that they do stand out? We talked a little bit about this yesterday, so I know we, we had a chat about how do you stand out in a market where there's a lot of people looking for the seller, you know, for the sellers and everybody's calling and saying, how do you think about putting your house on the market? How do you stand out? How do you tell your agents, what do you need to do today? On a, You just can't list, do the old three Ps, right? Put it in the MLS, pray that it sells, put a sign up. That's what a lot of agents do. But how do you separate yourself to really um, stand out so an agent, an out-of-state person goes, well, I'm going to definitely work with Catherine. She knows what she's doing. So I, I think, first of all, Jan, you've got to have a really top-notch social media presence, Great. right? I mean, that's number one, because even if you don't use it, trust me, your clients do. And at the very least, make sure that your Google My Business it is like right up there. I, you gave me information yesterday that I wasn't aware of that, you know, you could, you should have up to a hundred pictures on your Google, my business site, that that's really going to place you as Google algorithms will see you as that expert in that area. Right. And, and so that, uh, you know, take pictures of your office, take pictures of the, you know, put homes that you've sold, take pictures of the areas that you sell in, the different communities, the shopping areas, maybe do some reviews of services of companies, you know, movers and, and inspectors and, um, you know, any, anything that will give you more content mm -hmm. on your social media site. I'm going to, I'm going to recommend that would, that's probably number one. And get um, reviews. Let's, let's push and that. Get, yes. Get and, get, and get reviews. Right. Right, okay. um, cool. I love it. Uh, set up a YouTube channel, right? And utilize that for your listings. It's, I know, you know, it's amazing how many agents don't do that. Um, I, I'm, I'm so surprised. I, I think that, you know, if you don't have any listings right now, go and do video tours of your company's listings and put that up. You know, get your get your videos out there. Um, that's really important because, you know, I, I think it, you, I, I think as brokers, most brokers here in Nevada use what we a service we call List Hub, which is a platform that disseminates all listings out to, you know, over five hundred. I can't even, I think it's 800 now mm -hmm. of the top real estate platforms. But check with your check with your brokerage. Find out what platform do they use because I, I think most agents aren't even aware of this so that you can say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, within 24 hours of my listing your home, I'm going to have your home on the top 500 websites in the world, HGTV, Zillow, Realtor. It, it's, a, it's a small point that most realtors forget, um, but it's a great marketing tool. And of course, then you've got to have a great marketing presentation, a formal listing presentation. Um, and, and, and I would suggest that you do what we call a, it's old school, but it's a leave behind. But nowadays um, do a video presentation before you meet with the client and send it to them the day before. And you're going to give them a couple of homework suggestions at the end of that video. Uh, and just say, you know, before we meet tomorrow, I'd like to have you um, kind of give me, write down some, uh, first of all, any questions, you know, figure out what your homework is going to be for them. You know, write down any questions that you might have for me um, so that I can make sure I answer all of the questions that you have so that you feel comfortable and confident if we decide to move forward. Right. You're just going to maybe do make keep it short. Just keep it to uh, under six minutes, you guys. But um, that's one. That's another area 
that you can set yourself apart. So it has that jam, three things to set yourself apart. Is that good? It's beautiful. It's excellent. And you know, it's right in alignment with the stuff I like to coach. So, uh, all right. So this has been great. So let's just recap. So we know that the eviction moratorium officially expired by the administration attempting to get it, well, frankly, through uh, impacting certain counties. We know in Clark County it is impacting that, but there's definitely some legal battles going on, which are, even if there wasn't the legal battles, Catherine, there's still this time frame for everything to kind of work itself out with this rental assistance. But we just helped you with some ideas on opportunities. And I would say that you have to stay in the know. Where do you get your information? What do you recommend that, you know, like through your association, possibly, right? Uh, NAR, sign up. Because you, you have to get this information coming to you so you can stay on the cutting edge. Is there anything else that you use as far as a resource to know what's going on with the news for real estate industry? Well, I mean, hopefully your broker is yeah, keeping you updated right. on what's going on in your particular market, Jan, um, you know, I always want to say your best resource is your broker for your, you know, in, information. But yeah, NAR, Inman News, um, you know, there's there's a lot of, of really good real estate publications that you can subscribe to um, to keep on top of things. But each individual association is going to have a different sort of maybe way to uh, handle the, your um, current market. All right. And then you just shared some great ideas on how to get out there and find those non-owner occupied properties. And, and, and basically the things you covered, Catherine, work in any kind of farming, to be honest. We were just fight. We were saying there's an opportunity here. And I really do believe there are people who want to get out at the top of the market that are investors and they're going to be looking later maybe to buy and your job is to go out and figure out how you can find them. But until you're confident enough with your marketing plan and Catherine shares some great ideas on things to do from pre-listing to, to uh, setting yourself apart with video. And you know, if you listen to us here on the channel, those are near and dear to my heart, Catherine. Those are the things that we like to talk about a lot. So great stuff. And Google my business, your presence spot on. So folks, get out there and just do it, right? Pick something that maybe we talked about today. Don't be overwhelmed. Catherine, everybody's always overwhelmed, right? We give them too much information. So what would be your, I'm going to leave you with the final thought. What's the best thing that you would tell somebody to go do today after listening to this? What's the one thing or what's one piece of advice or something so they don't feel overwhelmed? You know, Jan, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because I, I talk to my agents and, and, I, and I coach my agents and you know, it is overwhelming that the technology, I've got to do a YouTube channel and I got to do marketing and I've got to do that. And, I, and I'm just going to say to agents, the first thing to do is just spend one hour and start writing down what you want to accomplish. I mean, I think that if you start organizing your thoughts and saying, my priority is you've got the things that you want to accomplish and and you taught me this right so let's say you have 10 things that you want to accomplish i want to accomplish a youtube channel i want to send out uh uh, uh postcards to to landlords i want to set up a farm i want to design a program and then you prioritize each one of those 10 items one two three four five six seven eight you know and you and you start working on that list you just forget the take item number one focus on that do that first and then move through your list. And and um, before you know it, and you're not going to do it overnight. You're not going to do it in a week. Listen, I tell my agents, it's probably going to take anywhere from six to nine months for you to set up all of your systems that you have to have. You know, I, I just want to say this real quick. I'm sorry, I, I, we're not going over. But well, we're I, fine. I, we'll go as long as we want to. I've, I've coached some of the top producing agents in the country, you know, multi, multi-million dollar agents. And I'm going to tell you that they have the same systems that I teach that brand new agents have to have, right? There's the only thing that's different in the last 20 years in real estate is the internet. Um, so if you, if you don't have business systems in place, Right. Your revenue graph is probably going to look like this. You get you, you start doing well, you plateau out, you bottom out, you go into panic mode, you start doing marketing, you go like this. Right. For you to have a steady, consistent revenue growth, 
you need to have steady and consistent systems in place. Num number one, it's the number I've trained thousands of agents and it's the number one thing that I see in successful agents is they all have systems in place. That is perfect way to end this. And to that point, um, go to the WBNLpodcast.com, episode 176. You can get all of Catherine's information. And as you know, we to that we teach Real Estate Sales Builder is the program that we have at WBNL Coaching. Sidebar, if you're at, over at, at Fidacity, you get that program for free. But as you know, we're offering a special deal. Uh, as we just rolled that program out and you can get that code by going through the show notes and get all of the Catherine's information in case you want to follow up with her and just ask her, pick her brain a little bit. I'm sure she'll share uh, all her experience and give you some more insights into the things we talked about today. Catherine, thanks for taking the time. I know how busy you are. Thanks for sharing your insights and uh, we'll have you back on the podcast and we'll keep talking. There's a couple other things I'd love to have you help come in and talk about because you're so involved in NAR and and I definitely want to uh, cover in the future things that are happening with those major lawsuits that are happening around um, agency. That's really big. I've not talked about that on the podcast. I really do think we should look at that as well as the pressure we're getting in the industry on this employee thing, a few other things that are happening. So can, can I have you come back and, and join Matt and I in the future and discuss cool. those? I'd love, I mean, yeah, cool. I'd love to. That'd be awesome. Thank you for inviting me, Jan. All right, everybody, make it a great day. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to go to WBNLpodcast.com for all the information, links, and Catherine's info. Make it a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.